Welcome to the File Aid for DB2 Browse and Edit Table Viewing Mode Primary Commands Module. Here you will learn about using the available primary commands with a focus on editing. Here we have opened an edit session in Table Viewing Mode. Primary commands are entered on the command line at the top. We will begin by looking at the closely related Find and Change commands. Think about it. You have to find it before you can change it. Since we are focusing on editing, here is a logical look at how to construct a change command. First, you need to specify what value or data you are looking for. Then you specify what the new value or data should be. Then you add which occurrences should be changed. Finally, you add where you want to look for this. Let's look at an example. Here we have opened an edit session in table mode and here are those same questions. We want to look for 55 and change it to 66. We want to change all occurrences, and we want to look at the first two positions of the credit card number column. Here we see the exact command to make this change. The search value, the new value, the scope, and where to look. This illustration may seem like overkill, but it does show the simplicity of the command. Let's have a look at the result. The confirmation message appears to the upper right, the cursor has been placed at the site of the first change, and the changed rows are flagged. In this next example, we have excluded some rows from the display. The current actual value is not important, but it must be replaced with 00. zero. We want to do this for all such occurrences. We will look at positions 5 and 6 of the Social Security number column and only change the currently displayed rows. Here is the exact command. Note the use of the keyword any since there is no one specific value. And here are the results. Again, we see the confirmation message the cursor placed at the first change, and the changed rows are flagged. For those who might not remember the command syntax, simply put a C on the command line and press Enter to display a change command window. This allows specification of the same parameters as the primary command and adds another parameter not available there the increment by value. Let's see how this works. Here we have specified various common values and increment by 2. Viewing the result, we see that five changes were made. The first occurrence of 3300 was changed to 1300. Subsequent occurrences were changed as well but the new value was incremented by 2 over each preceding value. Now that's cool! In this case, the values were numeric, but letters may be incremented as well. For example, B incremented by 2 would go to D, then F, then H, and so on. Okay. It's time for an easy one now. The flip command allows exchanging the display of excluded and non-excluded rows. Let's have a look. Here we see that an edit session has been opened on 21 rows. We enter a block exclude command and we see that the 12 rows have been excluded. We next enter the flip command and view the results. 
the 12 excluded rows are now displayed and the remaining nine rows are now excluded. Next, we have a look at the hide, hold, and reset commands. Hide allows you to omit one or more columns from the display for a more convenient look at the table. Hold allows for fixing one or more columns at the left side of the screen and disables their scrolling. Reset allows changing the hide and hold settings. Let's have a look. Here we see one way to hold the order number key column, but there is another way that many will prefer. Simply type hold or hide or reset on the command line and press enter. This will display a window allowing for column requests without having to type a column name. Note the available line commands. Here we have entered H to hold one column and X to hide another three columns. Pressing Enter again shows the resulting display. Pressing F11 to scroll to the right shows that the first column remained in place while the other columns scrolled. Now using the reset command displays the window seen previously. We enter the R line command to redisplay one of the hidden columns shown here. Next we will look at the sort command which allows you to sort the displayed rows for more convenient viewing. Here we see one way to sort a column in descending order but again there is another way that many will prefer. Simply type sort on the command line and press enter. This will display a window allowing for specification of sort parameters without having to type a column name. Here we have chosen to sort first on the order type column in ascending order and second on the order amount column in descending order. Here we see the result. Next, we will review this set of related commands. Browse and edit allow you to open a concurrent session. Jump allows you to move between windows. Cut allows you to copy rows. And, of course, paste allows you to add rows. Let's look at some examples. Here we have entered the command to open an edit session on another table. A note of caution here, the commands and abbreviations shown open a concurrent session on another table. You can go back and forth between the tables. Note the abbreviation for browse, BRO. There is a similar command, BR, which allows you to nest a browse session on a file, not a table. Don't get confused. Pressing Enter displays a window to name the table to be opened. Note that selection criteria may be used as well. Pressing Enter again opens the second table. The first table, labeled 1 of 2, becomes inactive. The second table, labeled 2 of 2, is the active table. The active table is generally the most colorful. If not, it is where the cursor appears. To activate or transfer control to another table, use the jump command. Here we see that the first table is now active. And here is a little more on the jump command. If several tables are open, you may jump to a table by its number or by its name. Also, the maximize and minimize commands 
change the rows displayed in the active table. With two tables now open, let's look at some additional options, namely cut and paste. Here we enter the cut command and choose the row to cut. Remember, cut does not cut, it copies. Pressing enter displays a confirmation message. We cut again and this time we specify a block of rows. These will be added to the row previously cut which is in the buffer. To clear the buffer, instead of add to it, use cut replace. Again, we see a confirmation message. Next, we jump to the other table and paste the rows from the buffer, placing them before the first row. Upon entering the paste command, we see a column selection window, which can be used for dissimilar tables. In this example, the tables are alike, so we just press enter. Here we see the result. The new rows are pending. Key values must be resolved prior to committing. There is another paste option to paste to a data set. That command displays a panel with data set and field delimiter options. There are numerous additional primary commands that you may wish to explore on your own. The online tutorial is always available by pressing F1, and the full File Aid for DB2 reference manual may be downloaded from Frontline. This concludes this module. Thank you.